All right, so um, welcome to the Health Tie Zoom call. I'm really excited to have my colleague Sandra Heffern on today. Um, Sandra is a consultant. Um, she owns Effective Health Design, and she is working with um, many stakeholders across the healthcare landscape on what I feel like is a very similar goal to what Health Tie is working toward, which is increasing the quality of healthcare and reducing the expense. And um, so when in looking through the materials for the um, Alaska Healthcare Transformation Project, it just it felt very aligned. And I look forward to Sandra telling us a little bit more about it. And for those of us online, thinking about where the intersection may be um, and how we can um, leverage what we're doing in both of these projects for Alaska. Um, so that's really the introduction. And if you haven't been on a call before, we do these every other week. Um, and we feature people like Sandra, and, uh, and we alternate with work sessions. So today, we're going to turn the call over to Sandra. Um, so if you would like to share your screen um, and walk us through that, that would be great. Okay. Well, let me see if I can do this. Um, I will start out by saying that technology is not my friend. So I will start sharing and see what happens. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, if you try hitting the green button on Zoom and pick the, the presentation screen you have up, hopefully it will work. And also feel free to turn on your video as well, Sandra, because then we'll have you picture in picture to be able to see you. Oh, that looks good. Uh, we can definitely see that slide. Yeah. Um, we may, okay. oh, that looks perfect. That? Okay. That's great. Hey, I did it, That's huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I'll go ahead and get started. All right, Thank so um, I'm going to try in 20 minutes to give you an overview of the Alaska Healthcare Transformation Project, which is a project that's really been uh, going on since October, officially going on since October of 2017. So it's going to be a, a very condensed version of the project. So I'll start out with what is the Alaska Healthcare Transformation Project? And this is really a cross-sector collaboration of what I've dubbed the four P's, payers, providers, policymakers, and patient advocates working together to transform Alaska's healthcare system. Um, this project is not owned by any one entity. It's not owned by the administration, nor is it owned by the legislature or by providers. It's really by Alaskans for Alaskans. Um, people have asked me, where, where does this sit? How is this going to um, be moving forward? And I always look at them and say, it's a project that all of us are, are going to own because we're all affected by healthcare in Alaska. We do have a project management committee um, and we were very um, thoughtful about how we structured this project management committee, but because even though I said that it's not owned by one entity, we did need to have representatives that were um, funders and providers of the healthcare system. So we have Senator Von Imhoff, Representative Sponholtz, Elizabeth Ripley from the Matsu Health Foundation, who represents a funder seat on the project management committee. Kalani Parnell from the Alaska Native Tribal Health Consortium, representing that tribal health organization or tribal health system. Becky Holtberg and Nancy Merriman, the Hospital and Nursing Home Association and the Primary Care Association, representing the provider seats, um, recognizing that you know, hospitals and nursing homes or, or the Primary Care Association are not the only providers, but we didn't want it to have, didn't want the project management committee to be too provider centric. And then Mike Barnhill from the Office of Management and Budget is the representative from the state. So he's representing the administration. Um, so we do have a vision for our healthcare system and without getting into wordsmithing because we wordsmith this quite a bit, um, it's really looking at the quadruple aim for healthcare. Um, it's the uh, improving health while also enhancing patient and health professionals experience of care and then lowering the per capita healthcare growth rate. We do have, um, <clears throat> before I get into the scopes of work, we do have three goals that are around the tagline of healthy Alaskans, healthy economy, everybody's business. Under um, healthy Alaskans, um, it's looking at the 
percentage of Alaskans with a usual source of primary care. You know, not looking at health care coverage, but that people have that, that Alaskans can identify with a primary care provider. Um, under healthy economy, we looked at the uh, per capita growth rate and right now Alaska averages about 7% per year for a growth rate and we would like to see that reduced to 2.25% or CPI, whichever is greater. And then under the, the tagline of everybody's business, it's really looking at trying to align payers, both public and private, towards some type of alternative payment model that's really based on value as opposed to being based, based on volume and seeking to reduce administrative burden. And that was, that was very important for the providers that have been involved in the, in the conversation. We've had, as I, as I alluded to at the very beginning, we have um, been meeting on this project since October of 2017. Um, different groups have come together. We had a, a convening group that were the, in quote, decision makers within the system. Um, we've had strategy development teams, which are people that are closer to the, uh, the implementation or the policy decisions. And um, what we recognized from all of those discussions is that we've, we've got a lot of information, but we, needed, we still had questions about what direction we needed to go in before we just jumped right into our recommendations about what we think a transformed healthcare system needed to look like. And so we developed four scopes of work that we put out. Um, we did a targeted solicitation because there's, there's a limited number of entities that are um, out there that do this type of research. We also did a broad solicitation, just making sure that we were casting that broader net. But we had um, four scopes of work. One was a meta-analysis and <laughs> I always have to do the caveat that is very broadly defined as a meta-analysis, you know, so if there's any statisticians in the room, um, really what we're looking at is wanting to build on work that had been done in Alaska over the last 10 years, recognizing that there has been a lot of work done and that, you know, we weren't recreating the wheel, but really wanted to see, have a, a synthesis of the reports and studies over the last 10 years that have been done in primary care utilization, uh, coordinating care, payment reform, data analytics, and then social determinants of health. Those were the, the five categories. We also, um, another scope was to look at a historical project scan. Um, different from the, from the reports and studies, you know, really looking at pilots, demonstrations, kind of experiments that we've tried. And then also recognizing the third one, recognizing that other states are a bit further down the road in their healthcare reform or healthcare transformation process. And so we wanted to learn from those other states. Um, so doing that national environmental scan, if you would. And then the final one, looking at um, the drivers of healthcare costs and what we're truly spending on healthcare in Alaska. Um, coupled with that final report would be the development of a roadmap or a blueprint of um, high level recommendations that we would then turn into um, a, a more detailed implementation plan. So in that solicitation, um, we sent the, um, the, the scopes to NORC at the University of Chicago, and they were one of the success, well, they were the, the successful uh, proposer. We did have several, several companies that bid on the, um, on the scopes. NORC, um, submitted a proposal to do all four scopes. And in hindsight, um, the project management committee really made a good decision to have one provider or one entity doing all four scopes because they really build on each other. Um, other, other companies had submitted to do all four, but the other part of what NORC did was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they paired with ICER and Circumpolar Health so that they had an Alaskan footprint. Um, 
just a little bit. So as far as where we're at in process right now, the um, the meta analysis, the historical project scan, both of those are both of those reports are in final stage and have been posted to our website. And the website is on the um, the final slide of the presentation. The national scan, we have that in draft form. I've reviewed it with. Um, members of the strategy development teams and have gotten feedback and provided that to NORC to do an update. And then the final report, I just received that um, two days ago and have not, have not completed my review of that one yet. Um, we'll be reviewing it with the project management committee next week and then with those strategy development teams in June and then um, have a final review with a, that larger convening group that is kind of consisting of those decision makers again, if you would, to finalize the recommendations going forward. Um, all of these reports are extensive. Um, the, I mean, the majority of them are like 200 pages long. So I mean, it's, it's definitely one of those that it's not light reading. Um, I did want to say from the meta analysis that we did with the reports and studies, um, I usually start with, well, how many reports and studies do you think we've done over the last 10 years? And most people are like, uh, 60, you know, that's, that's usually the highest number that I get. Um, we've done 300. We've done over 300 reports and studies in one of those five areas, um, you know, care coordination, payment reform, etc. cetera. Um, and only a handful of those were peer reviewed, evidence-based, something that we would be able to use to generalize to um, really looking at ways that we could transform our system. We have a lot of information about what our needs are, about what our issues are, but we don't have a lot of actionable information that we can then take forward to um, really try to reform or transform our healthcare system. So where we're at right now, um, through the, the initial review anyway of those first three reports, is really starting to look at some considerations. Um, should we, you know, so some of the things that NORC has brought to our attention, you know, should we look at this as a phased or incremental approach or to keep with the healthcare theme, should we just rip the bandage off and, you know, say this is the date and we're going to change. Even with states that have done those types of systems change, you know, it still becomes phased or incremental. And then some discussion about whether, um, engagement in the in the transformation process needs to be voluntary or mandatory. Um, we've one of the things that we asked NORC to do was to look at whether an all payer claims database would be something that would be of value going forward as we try to um, base our reform efforts on data. Um, and in other states, some of the some of the states have done it as a voluntary. Some have done it as mandatory. The ones that have been more successful have been mandatory um, engagement. Also, looking at coordination, consultation, and integration with Indian Health Services and tribal health organizations is going to be key to gaining buy-in and. Um, just looking at this project from a holistic Alaska approach and not just from a tribal or non-tribal or Medicaid or non-Medicaid. It's just really looking at the entire healthcare system and structure. Um, Alaska is unique with Indian Health Services in particular. You know, 20% uh, of our total population are Alaska Native American Indian um, beneficiaries. And so if we're looking at an entire healthcare system, we definitely need to have that consultation. Um, many states have moved to a regionalized structure with their healthcare delivery and regionalization can take many forms. We've talked about regionalization in Alaska for um, at least 10 years that I can remember. Um, you know, and, and now it's like either we, either we should move ahead with regionalization or take it off the concept list. Um, looking at still trying to maximize federal dollars to look at infrastructure change. Um, 
that under the Affordable Care Act, there were state innovation model dollars that were available. Those aren't available any longer, but there are some other infrastructure dollars that we think we can tap into. Um, engaging stakeholders early and ensuring ongoing engagement is, is critical. When we first started this, this discussion um, with that first meeting that we had back in October of 2017, our distribution list was about 70 people. Um, now it's up to about 175. So there's, and, and it's interesting too, that as we've, um, not that we've slogged through, but sometimes it feels like that, you know, but getting through some of the initial stages of, you know, gathering funds for the project and figuring out the direction and putting together the scopes and, you know, doing kind of that historical review. Um, it's not the real exciting part of it, but now that we're moving closer to recommendations and, you know, really uh, trying to formulate what some of those implementation plans might look like that there are more and more people that are engaged in the conversation and interested in becoming engaged in the conference in the conversation. The other thing that other states have done and that um, we have found incredibly challenging in Alaska is um, data analysis, uh, just being able to, I know that claims data um, are out there, but they are out there in numerous different silos. There's not a centralized place to be able to um, access data and having the capacity for doing the, the level of analysis that's really needed to look at, <clears throat> excuse me, health reform or health transformation has um, been, it's been challenging to say the least. And then, the other part of it is, you know, really trying to, even though this project has been incredibly fun and I've learned so much about our healthcare system that I thought I knew a lot about, um, having an infrastructure in place that we can do this um, kind of work, this policy kind of work that we're, that this project is really taking a look at that we need to have an infrastructure going forward that it's not just part of somebody's job to look at what other states are doing or to evaluate what, you know, even what we're doing in our state, but having that as that's what the function of somebody's job is or a group's job is or are, whichever, whichever form that would be. Um, so I, I think that that's something that we need to, to really think about as we go forward. So the kind of the concepts that have been bubbling up, if you would, um, at this point, I already talked a little bit about that data analytics capacity. Um, the, you know, in, in trying to look at what the cost drivers are or what we're spending on healthcare in Alaska, not having the data has been very challenging. Um, and some of, the, some of the reports that have been done historically that we've either based policy on or at a minimum have created talking points. The data set that was used to create those, um, those reports were very, very limited. Um, you know, and so I just think that we need, to, we need to just be a little bit more astute when we're, when we're looking at data and, and, and even looking at existing reports and what the, what the data sets have been. Um, regionalization is something that, again, you know, we've talked about it for such a long period of time that, it, you know, now it's like either we move it or we don't. Other states have um, really started, many of the states have really started moving towards a global budget, um, and a global budget can be defined in a lot of different ways. Um, but really looking at it in Alaska in particular because of the, the lower population base that we have is coming at it from a multi-payer perspective and how we would be able to um, work with all of those different, with, with all of the different multi-payers or different payers of healthcare in Alaska to come up with what a global budget could potentially be within different regions throughout the state. So it's, I mean, when you start getting into detail stuff, I think my eyes will start to gloss over. And then the other part of, of what a, a few states have been doing around social determinants of health, um, the, there's, uh, there's hesitancy in our state to go too far down that path um, because it's, it's kind of the, 
concept of we're going to boil the ocean. Um, and so just as maybe tiptoeing our way into it is to perhaps start with a standardized screening tool for social determinants of health. So when you go to a primary care practitioner, you know, they always check your weight, your blood pressure, and your temperature. Um, and so maybe then they're also talking about housing and food insecurity and, you know, just whatever those, those screening tools might be under the social determinant of, determinant of health umbrella. And there, I did that in a very condensed way because Kim told me I had 20 minutes. <laughs> So there's my contact information. And if you want more information about the project, um, we do have a website and you are more than welcome to go there. That was so, so great timing, Sandra. You just hit it, you nailed it. Um, I do have a question and there may be other people who have questions since we do have a few minutes. Sure. Um, I know that you have been tuning in to some of the health time meetings and are familiar with, I think what we're, um, attempting to do to some extent. Um, what, do you, what do you think could potentially be the um, overlap or intersection with this transformation that's going on um, and, and increasing or promoting innovation in healthcare? Well, I mean, I think that, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of discussion about the use of telehealth and, you know, it's at, at this point, I don't know how, how, how innovative that is uh, really. You know, because it's like, I think that there's pockets of, of telehealth that are happening. Um, you know, one of the one of the challenges with that that, well, in particular, that a cardiologist has brought up is that with when they're doing telehealth, they have um, you know they have their their practitioners at this end, if you would, but then they still have to have somebody else at the other end besides just the patient. You know, that is um, helping them to. <laughs> And I'll, I'll be very, very uh, basal about this, but, you know, like making sure that the, that the, the monitors are connected correctly, you know, you still have to have that, that other, that other person at the other, um, at the other end of the connection, but, you know, perhaps, you know, helping to figure out some of that kind of technology, um, you know, is there an easier way to do that, you know, especially with the, with the specialty or subspecialty services, you know, that might be something, um, I don't know whether, you know, even looking at um, whether there would be any interest in looking at like an all payer claims database, um, setting that up, uh, looking at ways that that can be managed or even looking at how, at how other states have done that kind of um, infrastructure, not only from the setup, but then also the ongoing maintenance of it and where those things would be housed. I mean, those types of, of questions or discussions, we haven't even got, we haven't gotten to that point yet. You know, we're still kind of going, you know, should we or shouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are, are there other questions for Sandra? We have about five minutes. I was also going to suggest, Sandra, you could stop sharing your slides now so the folks who want to jump on the video and ask questions can, uh, can be seen. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have, I have a quick question, so it kind of links back into that um, same kind of tangent. So beyond the sort of technical implementations, I mean, some of the challenges you spoke to and that you're mapping out there, um, will the outcomes of this, you know, is this something that you would look at as being a way to frame um, that an entrepreneur or innovator could look at this and say, hey, here's some, here's some problems that could I could actually get involved in working on. Is there a, or, or do all of these things require regulatory slash large institutional change? Or is, is there some small business opportunity that you see amongst all of this? Yeah, I would see small business opportunity for sure. Um, you know, it, of course, there's going to be statutory and regulatory change. There's going to be um, not only at a state level, but also at a federal level, you know, because when you look at federal funding coming into the state of Alaska, there's Indian Health Services, the Veterans Affairs, uh, Medicare, TRICARE, you know, it's like all of those are federal entities. And how do we, um, get those individual pipelines, if you would, to come in through um, 
I mean, I, in my mind, I've got this image of this big pipe and all these, these individual pipes that are coming through with funding that goes to a, a global budget within a region. Um, you know, and it's like just the, the mechanics of how those things would work. And then I think there's, um, in looking at any kind of infrastructure change within, <laughs> whether it's in an, within an individual provider or within a regional entity to figure out the, the, the organization and the management of a global budget, um, how do you develop systems to uh, measure outcomes? You know, that, I mean, we all talk about, you know, that it's like, yes, we're going to have outcome measures, but it's like really getting down to how do you do that? You know, how do you really have a system to measure outcomes? You know, and, and I mean, there's a level of sophistication that I think with a lot of, of provider organizations that just isn't simply there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And is that part of the transformation project is, is allowing them to adopt, let's say for example, it's, it's, it's solved through a technology solution. Um, I don't want to oversimplify the problem, but you know, let's say if it's a matter of conducting some sort of technical survey or giving people an app or something they could check in with to check on outcomes, is that you know something where there's um, a technology recommendations coming out of this, where it's like let's look at look at doing this, or as other states have successfully done that, uh, or is that still up in the air right now? Um, that would be down the road. You know, I think okay. that. So as far as kind of the, the the process, you know, I talked about that we'll have this July convening meeting, that you know we'll have the decision makers and you know make them sign in blood that these are the recommendations going forward, um, but then we'll spend the next six months really looking at a detailed implementation plan, and I think that that's where you're going to start seeing, um, you know, it's it, it will be people that are closer to the issue, you know, because. If you're going to do implementation, you have to have people that are actually going to be doing the implementation in the in the room, having the discussion. And I think that would be where the opportunities to really look at where additional innovation could come in. Yes. Well, that's great. Well, it looks like um, we're at 1:30, and so this has been really helpful, um, Sandra. I appreciate um, you jumping in and doing this for us. We recorded it, and so it will be posted um, on our website. And um, I think we'll go ahead and wrap up.